my channel my name is Shamika and this is check the rhymes if you're new here make sure you tap the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I upload a video and so the upload schedule is right now every other week and that's just because these interviews are a little long and I want to make sure you have time to enjoy it and go back revisit it and catch some of those gems that these artists are dropping and the entertainers are dropping and you know just just soak it all in sprinkle some love on the like button leave some comments share it with your mama and them all that fun stuff anyway so I'm super excited about today's guest I know I say it every single time because I'm always excited to have a guest here well, joining me today on Check the Rhymes is a dear friend of mine, and he is one that's responsible for helping to shape the sound of the 80s. And you're like, the sound of the 80s? I'm talking about music, because I love 80s music. And I'm talking about none other than multi-platinum songwriter, producer, Paul Lawrence. And you're like, I know that name. Of course you know that name. He's responsible for songs such as Freddie Jackson's Rock Me Tonight, Jam Tonight, um, Stephanie Mills, You're Putting a Rush on Me, uh, Melissa Morgan's cover version of Do Me Baby. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But he's back working with a new artist and they just released some new music. So we're gonna talk to Paul about the new music. We're gonna talk to him about some of the legends that he's worked with, of course, also going to find out what affirmations that he uses daily to keep him going because you know I love a good affirmation so stick around you don't want to miss this interview so thank you for joining me Paul how are you oh, I'm good thank you for having me I appreciate it oh, I'm glad you could come I was just telling everybody that I think you were one of the the most influential producers that kind of really shaped the sound of the 80s you know, wow. hyping you up over here being a good cheerleader. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, well, speaking of that, I always wanted to know, because I don't believe I've ever really asked you this, who influenced you? Ooh, there's a variety, you know, from the Jackson 5 to Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Earth, Wind & Fire. Uh, personally, there was uh, my mentor, his name was Andrew B. Cooper. But, you know, he's not famous or anything like that, but he was pretty much the, the, the one overall. Okay. I read something, or maybe it was an interview I was listening to, where you mentioned something about Ashford and Simpson and, and how they kind of also kind of gave you that, that peek into how, like, the behind the scenes, like, I think it was a story about them driving some fancy car or something. Oh, Can yeah, they were, they, were, they were definitely a role model. As a matter of fact, they're, before Ashford and Simpson, they were the guy that I was just saying mentioned earlier, B, Andrew B. Cooper. They uh -huh. were partners together, but he ended up just staying in the church, and they went on to become Ashford and Simpson. But uh, yeah, they would attend the church, and um, they would show up way back in the '60s with Rolls Royces. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, you get that from writing? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't artists at the time, so you know, and yeah, they were to see them come in, and they would come in and sing, and you know, with the choir and everything like that, and. It was really inspiring that way. Okay, so is that kind of what made you, like what really kind of pushed you to, this, to say, let me try this music thing? Or was there something else that you were doing before you switched to doing music? Well, I've always done music. I used to do talent shows with friends in the neighborhood. And, um, you know, I used to, my voice was like, you know, like Michael back then, you know, I'm not saying that I sang as good as Michael, but it was that, that tone, that pitch, Mm -hmm. And then one day it changed. The tone changed as I got older. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't sound like that no more. And I don't sound nearly as good as I used to sound, you know. So I was like, okay, but I still want to do this. So I got to figure out another way to, to break into this and do this continually. So it, again, seeing Ashford and Simpson mm -hmm. and how I was like, wait a minute. Hmm. <laughs> so there is another path. So I started uh, forming groups and ensembles of, uh, putting voices together and you know choirs and stuff like that and just develop from that okay all right well i know that gosh it's been a couple of years since we've talked at least interview wise and so i know that at one point actually i think when i 
first talked to you, did an interview, it was like 2016, 17, somewhere around in there. And at the time we were talking about you had taken like a 30 year break. Woo. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, <that was> mercy. <laughs> 30 year break, but then you were coming back. So for the people that don't know, why such a long break? And then what brought oh, you what? back? It wasn't that I had stopped doing music. I had taken a break from trying to really focus on the diehard industry. Mm -hmm. I was so disillusioned with so many things that had happened. Um, you know, growing up in the inner city, you don't learn business. You learn what you know how to do. And right. so when the business thought came into it and money started exchanging hands and, you know, just different things happened where, you know, I was like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to have this, but I don't. And, you know, so rather than continue to just, you know, it was just, I was just going down this hole that wasn't good. It wasn't, you know, a lot of it was like I re remembering things that my mother had taught me, like, you can't cross this line. You know, there were times where people was offering me things that, you know, would have set me up, you know, financially, but I was like, it just did not feel right. So, you know, yeah. I took the time to just back away, you know, and, you know, I, of course, over time, the more time you stay away, you know, the less influence you have over whatever, and then people start to forget you and stuff like that. When talent never diminished, it was just that I just couldn't get a handle of why, you know, I was getting ripped off so much. And it was because I didn't understand the business, you know, and I, there was no reason for me to because that, that wasn't the focus. It, I was always doing music as opposed to doing business. So I, rather than end up being hurt or hurting right. someone, I decided to step back. <laughs> hurt someone. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know what is, what's the saying? Not all money is good money. <laughs> <laughs> not even that, just not knowing. If you yeah. don't know, you don't know. So, you know, rather than continue down that rabbit hole and, and uh, you know, and then a lot of times people, when there's not enough to go around, you know, people just kind of misuse it. You know, it's like, you know, when you, when you have an abundance, then you can pretty much survive, you know, figure out things. But when there's not an abundance, everybody has to eat from that. So it's right. tricky, you know, so. Okay. All right. So, but, but now you're back. Yes. Like, you know, back to the forefront. Yeah. And I, right. I just heard, well, actually I was scrolling through Twitter and I was like, hold up, did I just see Paul Lawrence and, and, and a music clip? And, and as I hit play, it, it's the song, um, no matter how you rock it, which I, I right. love it. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you. So talk about that and talk about like working with Vincent Matthew because he's a younger artist. You know, I'm, I'm finding that some of the artists that I've, or producers that I've talked to and artists that I've talked to like over the past couple months, it's like the younger artists are wanting to work with veterans in the business. So talk about well, that. Well, we veterans, we know we don't have the, um, in terms of the, the spotlight and uh, mass appeal, you know, as you get older, people kind of like, you know, this country is terrible at pushing the, the elders to the side, but um, <laughs> it's a youth driven business and, you yeah. know, it is what it is. And artists, younger artists would do themselves a favor to work with, we're dying out. Once we are gone, they don't know how to do like from real scratch music. We're the last, my generation is really the last of those who know how to do it from scratch. Right. So to, if you really want to continue the art form going forward, it would be wise to, you know, to hook up with, you know, the older uh, or senior <laughs> producers now, because we, you know, we may not be mainstream in terms of, but we can, you know, just like Quincy, Quincy, you know, working with Michael, you know, Michael was, has his talent. He was already a superstar, but when he hooked up with Quincy, it was out of here. So right. it was, that's the difference. You know, you can be good all, on your own, but hook up with somebody that's totally knowledgeable. It's amazing what you can do. So that's, that's the lesson in this with the younger and the older. So here's what I'm thinking, Paul. I'm thinking you might need to show me how to produce and write songs. <laughs> well, I can show you, but then I'd have to. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, hey, if you got it, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I, you know, some people think producing news is like producing music. So <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. So, so talk about how did you how did you find Vincent Matthew because you know when I heard his voice I'm like whoa like where did this kid come from I mean I don't know how old he is well I've known him for a long time when I moved from New York years ago to California I met him then um, and he was like like I said barely out of his teens and mm -hmm. I remember I was 
uh, putting together this, singing with this group of, of singers and going over parts. And I was giving out the parts and he was actually filling in for the bass player, singer or whatever. Uh -huh. And when I got to him, he just started singing notes that I wasn't even going to give him, but the notes that he was singing was better. <laughs> oh. like he was adding to the chord like, well, that's not the chord, but actually that's kind of, that's actually better than the actual chord that I had. So, and I just knew right then this young kid just kind of smiling and <laughs> singing it was like whoa and then over time i got to know him and then i found out that he was not only that but he's a you know he was a songwriter a singer overall and i was like whoa and then we all everybody found out that he could sing and, you know one day he sang a stevie wonder song at the piano and just blew everybody away so wow. over the years we you know kept you know in touch and all that stuff and you know finally it's like hey man we need to do something and uh this is where it is now that's amazing um so talk about how you guys worked on this the the new song because like i said i love it oh, i appreciate that again well it's a song that he wrote um i just you know did the quincy thing with it you know just made sure that everything all the elements came together properly mm -hmm. um he's an amazing vocalist uh so we, we took carefully you know the background vocals you know it's unfortunate when you mix a song, you have to put everything in a perspective. If you were just to, if you were just to feature just the background vocals alone and louder, it's amazing what he's done. Um, and just the, the, the range that he has in terms of his knowledge of music. And, you know, he has the hip hop thing. He knows, you know, how to put beats and stuff together. So I think the combination of the two of us is, is pure magic. Well, let me know if y'all need some um, background vocals and I will work on mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We'll do. <laughs> so, um, so are you guys going to put out like a, a complete album or is this kind of just the single to see how it, how well, we're going to release song. I'm going to release another song soon on him uh, to do a whole album. I mean, to me, that's for established artists today that you can come on and just put a whole project out and everybody's just checking it. Right. But for artists that are, you know, for me, it's a, it's a, it's almost like starting over again in a mm -hmm. sense because you know it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, again, my talent is my talent. You know that has not diminished. Uh, but you know, but people don't. You know, hey, who are you? Whatever. But so we're gonna do it the old, the new way, where you know the old Motown way. You release singles until, hey, now people know you, and then the people will tell us we need an album. Right. right. In the in the beginning, we're just gonna do the single thing and see how that goes. One, since you just brought up the old Motown way, um, I was having a conversation not too long ago. Um, I believe it was with Kevin Ross. And, um, and then I was talking to another friend about it as well. But a lot of the artists that are, are up and coming artists, they're wanting that to still get that traditional record deal versus going indie. What, what would your advice be for somebody that's up and coming? I mean, if it's there for you, go for it. Uh, I mean, it's nothing like, you know, mass appeal, right, as quick as you can. But that's that's not the norm anymore. I mean, you know, right. it's, a, it's a new playing field. I mean, Spotify and Apple have opened it up to where you don't have to, you still need money, <laughs> but you don't have that, that distribution thing has almost been taken away from you, uh, yeah. from it. You have instant distribution. So if you could figure out how to get people to listen to your stuff, that, that's the goal now, figure out how to get people to listen. And once that happens and, you know, let, leave it in their hands, they'll decide whether they're going to listen to it or not and take it from there. But, you know, if you can hold on to it, I'd say go, you know, take your time and, and, and build it from scratch. It's like 20 people coming to see you versus you had lined up with somebody and you're on the bill, but they're really not coming to see you. You kind of like... What is that? Right. <laughs> You're not really building fans, but if you only got 20 people coming to see you, you know that those 20 people are your fans. So right. start from that and build uh, if you can. But if you can get the deal, go for it. You know. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, I had all these questions prepared, and I'm like, just I'm just going off the top of my head at this point. <laughs> just <throw them> mine. <laughs> so I was curious, though. You know, since you mentioned putting out singles with with Vincent. You're an established artist. Are you going to? Well, give not us an so album? established as an artist, but I'll take it. Thank you so much. You're so <laughs> kind. <laughs> no, I'm 
No, now, I grew up around the Freddie Jackson. Because Jimmy Fallon said so. <laughs> oh, no, he, Jimmy, Jimmy tried to clown me, but that's okay. Uh, no, I, my thing is, I, I got, I grew up around great singers from like the Freddie Jacksons of the world and, and church, just people that could have made it if, you know, if they were whatever, for whatever reason they didn't, but just singers. So right. to call myself, now I, I believe that I can sing, but I grew up around singers. So it's almost embarrassing to, for me in my own head to go, well, I'm a singer. It, it, just because of how I grew up. Okay. Now there's other people that don't grow up around that and they become great singers or performers and it, it doesn't affect them at all. But psychologically for me, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've sat for years and listened to Freddie sing before he became Freddie Jackson and, and right. other singers that sing just as well. So for me to go, well, I can sing. Too. <laughs> it was, it's just funny to me. So I'd never considered myself. So when I did my record, it was just kind of like, can I have a record deal? And it was like, okay. And so I just did it. it was, so it wasn't, yeah. I never took myself serious as a singer, put it that way. Okay. Now I think I can sing as good as the average singer, but when you're talking about growing up and being around singers, there's no way. So. I mean, I always felt like, you know, um, like you, Lilo, um, I don't know. It seems like all of y'all kind of around that time had that same kind of tone. I'm not Freddie. I'm taking Freddie out of that equation. <laughs> but like you all kind of had that same, I don't know what to call it. Cause I, you know, I don't know my. Well, it's the same sound as the sound comes from within a camp, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, yeah, it was that pretty much that spin Lilo. You know, Lilo doesn't get a lot, Lilo Thomas doesn't get a lot of credit for starting, you know, like with Hush Production. Of course, Melba Moore is the queen of Hush. But in terms of the male artists, it was Lilo Thomas that kind of paved the way for right. Freddie Jackson to to evolve from that. Right. And a, a lot of times that first artist is the sacrificial one, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, but, you know, Lilo, I learned a lot. Like I've said it in the past, that was the, the most fun project for me to ever do, the first Lilo record. Uh -huh. Because it was all new to me. I'm in the studio and I'm like, okay, what does this do? <laughs> I'm this stuff. And just being in charge, you know, yeah. by myself. You know, I, you know, I worked with the Evelyn stuff with Kashif and, and, I, and Maury Brown collaborated on that. But I was just one of three people there. But with Lilo, you know, I got to call the shots. It's like my first time. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was real, really fun to do that. Yeah. So how was that? Like, I mean, you're calling the shots. Are you like... I hope they just go along with what I say sounds good <laughs> or like was it? Well, well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't like a tyrant or anything like that. You know, I got a, you know, Lilo had a lot to do with it as well. But um, it was just fun. He, at, the both of us kind of grew up together as musicians or a sing, producer, singer, you know, just kind of experimenting. Mm -hmm. I got some funny stories that I will never tell about Lilo. It was, oh, it was no, I was going to ask. <laughs> you know, and, and if he sees this, he'll know exactly, he'll probably start laughing because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, um, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that about him, tell on him that way. But um, so it was just fun, you know, innocent, don't know, like, you ain't supposed to be doing that or you're supposed to be just free to just be. But after, you know, then when success comes, a lot of that stuff goes away. You have to focus now on what works and what doesn't. So the right. fun stuff gets put to a minimum. So that's why that was the, 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 my favorite project to work on because it was okay. innocent. Yeah. Well, since you brought up projects, I do have a list of some, you know, I wondered if you had any tea or backstory you could, or something funny, just, you know, cause we're just, we're, we're nosy around here at Check the Rhymes. And I say we, like there's a whole group of people over here, but it's just me, <laughs> but, um, I wanted to ask you about some, I'm just going to name a song and you tell me first thing comes to mind. Sure. And, um, and won't that be a fun game? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, Sue Me. Sue Me was originally, I wrote that for Earth, Wind and Fire. I had met with Maurice White and um, he actually, he loved it, but he just could not get around. He's like, could you change the lyrics? Sue Me. Ah. <laughs> And I, you know, I, and I was going to do it, but, you know, I don't know if he was just being courteous or nice to me, you know, but we sat around for one evening and we talked about it and he loved it, but he just, he just, he just kept saying, but sue me though, <laughs> you know, I don't, 
And, you know, of him being who he was, he probably, you know, people probably trying to do that to him all the time, so he probably couldn't wrap his head around it. But um, anyway, it fell through. Uh, but that experience, you know, sitting with him, and um, I decided, hey, let me try to do my limited impression of Earth and Fire myself <laughs> for the song. So that's what I did. You know, that's well, what I mean, it's a great from. song. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm like, I'm like talking about acting like I'm digging in a basket here, but I have the songs written down. Uh, <laughs> Do Me Baby. Well, that's a Prince song. Right. Uh, I had nothing to do with the, the writing of the song, but right. <laughs> um, it was, um, I think it was, I was in California one night with uh, Charles Huggins and Don Grierson, he was the head of um, Capitol Records at the point, and we were here having dinner. And all of a sudden, they, Don Grierson said to me, would you produce Do Me Baby on uh, Melissa Morgan? And I was like, instantly, it's almost like the rest of the conversation I didn't even hear, because uh -huh. as soon as he said it, I was like, wow, what a great idea. And I already, as he was talking to me more about it, the arrangements and everything was just popping into my head. like, I know exactly how I'm going to do that. And wow. uh, the rest is what it is. Yeah, I, you know, I think a lot of people, that's, that's the first song they think of when they think of her. At least, okay. at least as I've been scrolling through Twitter, it seems that that song is always mentioned. Her but that Fool's Paradise that she wrote, that, that's, a, that's yeah. the jam right there. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you, you mentioned Evelyn, um, Evelyn Champagne King, or does she just go by Evelyn King now? I don't know what she... Well, she well, prior to working with Kashif and I and Maury, she was Evelyn Champagne King. She changed it to Evelyn King during those times. But in recently, I think in recent years, she's gone back to the Champagne because, you know I mean, that um, Shame was a huge record. So everybody right. worldwide knows her for Shame. So yeah, I guess she decided to, hey, I can't get rid of that Champagne part. So. <laughs> we still going to call her <laughs> Evelyn Champagne King anyway. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> So what about working um, working with her? Like, I'm in love and, you know, any other song you worked on there? Yeah, I'm in love and Love Come Down. Mm -hmm. It was, again, it was, uh, it was a collaboration, obviously, Kashif wrote those songs. But as producers, we all, Maury Brown, Kashif, and I produced the record. And it was really, working with Evelyn, that was the first time working with a real pro. I mean, it wasn't, you know, yeah, she had a one or two records before. Well, maybe she had more than that. But of course, Shane was already a huge, right. huge record. And by this time, you know, working with us, she had been a seasoned studio singer. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that people don't understand. Singing in the studio and singing live are two completely different animals. Yeah. Now, she was seasoned in both stage and live. So to watch her work in the studio was just amazing. She, a lot of those takes was just one takes. Wow. Uh, and her background singing and harmonies and all that stuff, just quick. So I'm sitting there like, oh, okay. And we're like, we got time left. She's gone. So what are we going to do with the rest of the time? <laughs> <laughs> but she's an amazing performer, amazing talent she was. And for the first, the first artist to work with, that was pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. What about, um, well, working with Freddie Jackson, I mean, you know, I mentioned in my intro, which of course you didn't hear that part, but, uh, you know, the, the, that's just a list of receipts in itself, you know, and, and you had a lot to do with that. <laughs> well, well, I, I know Freddie years before he became Freddie Jackson, you know, we sang in uh, church groups, choirs together. And um, so I got a chance to, both, both of us got a chance to know each other. By the time we did the first songs together, it was like, into, you know, I knew what he was going to sing. He knew what I was going to write, that kind of thing. So it was, I mean, we wrote Jam Tonight like years before anything happened. So it, wow. by the time it was ready for him to become an artist and he became an artist, Jam Tonight was just a song. It was like, wait, remember that song we wrote together? <laughs> and we just bought it in. So again, it was, it was written years before it ever came out. Right. Wow. So we kind of knew each other, you know, hand in glove kind of thing, artist-wise, you know. Okay. Getting sick and producer, whatever. And you mentioned Melba Moore. Like, what was it like working with her? Melba had every opportunity to be a snob because she was Melba Moore, but yeah. she was totally opposite. You know, Melba would outwork you in the studio. <laughs> if you like, you sit there, you be sleep. Melba like, okay, what do you want me to do? <laughs> she 
she would bring her food. She had a, you know, she was on a strict diet, so she would bring all that stuff to the studio. And you're sitting there like, I, I only want to be here for a couple of hours. You bought stuff like we gonna be here all night. So, <laughs> so it was kind of intimidating. Like, wait a minute, I don't want to work that long. You, you trying to work all night? <laughs> but she was down. I mean. It, like I said, total opposite. She could have pulled rank as, you know, I'm Melba Moore, not a drop. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I can tell, so, like, just even seeing her on social media, just every time I see a comment, it's love Melba Moore. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, you know, I got to ask about working with Kashif. <laughs> okay. Well, Kashif, Kashif was well seasoned by the time I started working because he had been at BT Express. So he had had a taste of what it's like to be in in music or in show business, so to speak, or the music industry. Mm -hmm. That was my first time ever working, you know, when I hooked up him and Maury and myself. So he had a, a wealth of knowledge about the business that I just did not have. Right. And I remember for, it took us about, we worked for like three months steady in the studio, he and I just trying to figure out a sound uh you know daily and maury brown had the studio reserved for us and uh so we would we'd be in there like hours at a time and then finally one day you know we kind of got it <laughs> it's like oh here it is <laughs> and the rest is history so in terms of he knew like by the time success started to happen he knew how to go to next right i was still like wait I, it's happening <laughs> 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 and I didn't, I was, it was like a deer in headlights for me because it was my first time, but he already having been in BT Express for years and right. figured out how this stuff works. He kind of knew how to maneuver. And it, he, so I was sort of a slow bloomer that way in terms mm -hmm. of how do you go to the next? And so it took me a little bit, you know, Freddie was my next after, well, Lilo and then Freddie, but it took me a minute to kind of go, oh, okay, this is what you do. All right. Right. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And of course, but, I and, got in it. terms of Kashif, he's definitely, you know, yeah. very peace going guy, uh, very personable. You know, he has more personality than I could ever, you know, in terms of personal and be, being around people. I just, you know, I like people, but uh, <laughs> I got a limit. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I know I thought he was crazy when I met him and he's like, come on to my apartment. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you don't even know me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about Stephanie Mills? Oh, Stephanie was, um, that was one of those, you know, come through and, uh, you know, Timmy Allen had that song of you putting a rush on me. And I was working with Timmy a lot. Timmy was at that particular time, my go-to bass player, co-songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrote a lot of songs together. And one day he came to my home, I think he had my house, and he had a, on cassette, a demo, putting the rush on Look, I got cassettes on. <laughs> okay, and, he, and the, music, the music was playing. I was like, man, that is a smash. <laughs> so I ended up writing the lyrics for it, and just a little bit of the melody, but he pretty much, Timmy, you know, came in, and it was well done. I played it for Stephanie. They wanted to do it. Boom. It was, it's history, whatever that is. Yeah, that's great. I, I love like all these stories. I can probably keep yeah. asking about a ton of other ones, but I'm not going to take all, take all yeah. of your time today. So what's next? What's next for you? Besides putting out more singles, what, el what else are we working on here? Well, you know, just, you know, it's, it's now it's about, you know, seeing what I can do now, you know, it's, it's challenging that way. It's actually exciting because you know, like I said, the, this country writes off as elder states, statesmen, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm the eldest of the elders, but I'm older now yeah. and considered, you know, older in the business. And I'm yet, to, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, to prove that theory of, you know, if you're older, you're washed up. I, you know, I'm trying to hang with the youth again. And I, I think I can take my experiences and do it. I couldn't do it alone on me and try to be youthful. That would just be so awkward. <laughs> but, we would be like, um, what is he doing? Taking my experiences <laughs> and transferring it to the youth and the combination, that's how I can continue to live. Or, or they, how they say, now, let me live. Can I live? <laughs> Whatever my little grandson would say, you won't let me be great. <laughs> so, 
that's my thing to, you know, to do now. Okay. So one of the things on Check the Rhymes that I have been doing or testing out anyway, so you're like my third person I'm asking this question. <laughs> what affirmations or what, you know, positive thing do you tell yourself to motivate you to continue doing what you love? Like, you know, is it, I don't know, like something that just what, what is it that keeps you going? I don't know that people have like all kinds of different affirmations. Like, you know, I tell myself every day I'm good enough and I'm talented and you know, I'm going to get through this without stumbling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. But do you have something like that that you could share? I do. And without getting controversial, um, I now know who I am as the scripture says, literally who I am. Mm -hmm. And that is everything to me. That's my affirmation. I like that. And how can people find the single? Where is that? I'm just on any streaming. It's on platform? Spotify. It's on all the major uh, streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, all whatever you, uh, Amazon, Google, uh, whatever. iHeart is everywhere now. Okay, great. So, well, you'll have to come back when the next single drops. I appreciate. We'll, we'll do. Appreciate and that. You're gonna have to give me some tea. You're gonna have to. Okay, I will do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much all right thank you so much paul that was paul lawrence guys and i will see you guys in the next video